Hey, what's up, guys? Man, nice day out today. The sun is out, and it's a little sharp, but for the most part, woke up this morning about 7.45 a.m. Super bright outside, like brighter outside than it's been in a long time. And uh, so I expected it to be hot, but I walked outside. It was 64 degrees. It was really nice. And uh, she's starting to warm up now, but uh, man, so far so good. So uh, I'm not really sure what to do today. Um, I lack motivation. I've been uh, trying to figure out an engine um, for Crystal X, and I've been just hitting a brick wall on both of those. And well, I decided I was going to get something done. So I took this engine out of 11. This is a NTC 350. Uh, it's a big cam three. And the reason I say that is because it's got a high flow radiator. And uh, so that's what I'm getting at. But uh, you guys remember this engine and I, and I said it in the beginning, this engine had froze. Uh, they just had water in it. It froze, pushed out a bunch of expansion plugs in the head. And I thought, well, I'll just pop them back in there. Hopefully the block's not busted and uh, bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle. But the problem is the block is busted. As soon as I filled it up with water, it went right in the oil pan. I didn't see a crack on the outside of the block because if you imagine the turbo sitting here and the downpipe going like this, I looked behind the downpipe and in front of the downpipe and well, right where the downpipe is, big eight inch long crack in the side of the block. So this block's junk. Also when I was taking the oil pan off, there was a smashed up push rod in there. And if you guys remember from the will it start video, of course it started and uh, you know, run away for a little bit and uh, got some RPMs and it popped out a push rod and bing bang boom, uh, cylinder misfire. Push rod is broken in half, smashed flat down. Um, this engine, this block is no good, but the crank is good, rods and pistons look good, the sleeves look good. Um, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna get a pallet, get it over here, I'm gonna get, uh, First of all, I'm going to get the top off. I'm going to get this pipe right here um, off. Then we're going to take the valve covers and the fasteners and group those together. Jake's and the fasteners and group those together. Rocker boxes and the fasteners group those together. And those are going in a tote because those belong to Chad. We're going to we're going to mark um, we're going to mark all the fasteners that come out of that because it looks like we have two, four, six, eight. nine that are the same and then four that are long so this is actually going to be a lot easier than a couple of the ones i've already done but we'll uh we're going to take a quick little picture of this so that we can use that for when we assemble it on the blue truck for chad and uh so we'll get after this stuff we'll get this off get the valve covers off get the rocker boxes and the jake housings off we'll get those in a tote for chad and then we'll get the water manifold exhaust manifold intake manifold and the, the accessories off of this engine and get those in a tote. We'll get the uh, heads off, get a look down in the cylinders, see what's up in there, look at the valves. We may take these heads and have them cleaned and a uh, valve job done and new freeze plugs put in there because we may build an engine. I've got a bunch of heads, but this is, this is a match set off a matched engine and uh, I'd like to just be able to put that together. Might take this, uh, this exhaust manifold and uh, have it dipped and uh, we'll try and get we'll try and get all that done today the heads off all the accessories off in totes get the transmission off get the bell housing off now there's some magic that has taken place with this bell housing it's it's for this truck specifically so we need to be careful with it um, we will leave the transmission sit out here because we're going to do a scrape and a pressure wash of the frame and uh, the transmission, we'll get that transmission picked up and cleaned up and painted up. This transmission is an RTO. I don't even know if it's an O. Oh, I think it's just an RT14613. Yeah, so anyhow, I don't know what we're going to do with it. We'll probably clean it up, paint it up, put it right back in this truck. Uh, I do want to get an engine in this truck pretty soon because this truck is pretty much road worthy. Um, we slap a motor in there, get that radiator cleaned and pressure checked 
put it in, throw some hoses and stuff on there, bing, bang, boom. Bob's your uncle and this is a run and driving truck. And that would be super cool. I do have a Cummins engine. It's an STC engine. There's some pieces missing. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that. I could very well block off all the STC stuff and use these heads. If these heads aren't junk, I could use these heads, these rocker boxes, and these jakes on that engine and uh, be dialed in. But we'll just see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. First of all, let's get the stuff apart. We'll get a skate over here. We'll get the stuff apart. We'll get a pallet or we'll get a pallet. We'll get some uh, totes and we'll get some tools and we'll bing, bang, boom this apart. Uh, you know what? It ain't easy being pretty and everything I do tends to suck a little bit. But, you know, this has been relatively easy um, so far. Let's get after it. I'm just going to blow off this dirt. got some damage up here this would be the cylinder right here that lost the lost the push rod and uh, we'll see that better I see one push rod off and the injector push rod the injector rocker arm is busted and I see that adjuster in there so this is this this what this cylinder and that's that's another thing that sucks if this block would have been good and I started looking at this, I would have started in this cylinder and found that problem first, but, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get a look in there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clear out some of the debris from in here. Probably hit it with the air too. But I want to see, I want you to see what's happened in there. Okay. So I think you can see pretty good that each one of these rocker arms has an adjuster on it. Except for this rocker arm right here that's broke off and this is what that ticking noise was and why it was missing why it had a cylinder misfire as soon as i figure out the proper way of removing this i don't even know if i can get it out of there um, Working on it. Stand by. This rear rocker is, is uh, bent up a little bit. And then, there we go. Alright, so this piece here used to be down here. And what happens is, uh, an injector sticks. And uh, the push rod has so much power that regardless of the sticking injector, it's going to lift. And so what it does is it lifts up and it either breaks off this piece here or it just makes hamburger meat. Um, and actually it's weird because there's a push rod in here. So that means the push rod that's down in the oil pan was down in the oil pan from a previous uh, deal. Uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of just normal Cummins. Uh, if you screw up on the valve adjustment, get yourself out of sync and uh, and such. 
uh, you'll hit a valve and then it'll it'll hamburger meet the push rod that's why the cam looks so good because this engine did not damage a push rod it just broke this rocker I'm, I'm gonna grab that push rod out of there but I'm gonna take you off the mount clean my hands take you off the mount show you all of the push rods and then remind you of the push rod that was uh... alright so uh, just for demonstration purposes this was in the oil pan and uh, what happens is and there's actually a piece of it missing I think um, we'll see in a second because it seems pretty short for Cummins but uh, what happens is you have a camshaft that turns on a timing setup so it opens and closes the valves by pushing on these rocker arms and pushing valves down and also pushing down uh, injectors and spraying the fuel and that's how your timing all works and that's kind of a long story but uh, what happens is the cam's got lobes which are high spots it's got a center line and then a high spot and the high spot pushes on some followers some rollers rollers that are down there and these push rods set on top of the roller has a little deal and when the cam goes when the roller goes up the cam it pushes up the push rod, it pushes up the side of the rocker arm, and pushes down on whatever it's supposed to push down on. Now this was in the oil pan of this uh, engine. It is old and nasty and smashed and busted. This is not out of the ordinary, guys. Uh, if you've been working on your own stuff, or if you're a mechanic, and you're working on Cummins, uh, on anything really, it can all eat. Uh, push rods um, so it's not out of the ordinary but usually what will happen is uh, something caused the break which I'm gonna say this broke because the injector stuck and so when the injector plunger stuck it increased the pressure required to open it uh, to where the push rod uh, broke the this chunk off the rocker arm now this is what the push rod sits on and it raises up uh, but anyhow this was in the oil pan. This was broke off. We knew this had a miss. I could hear it in the engine. The thing is, though, in these Cummins engines, there's uh, 18 push rods. 18 push rods. And uh, when you find a push rod like this in the oil pan, When you find this in the oil pan you expect this to have come from this valve train then when you open the valve cover and you see this you go ah yeah that's what happened bent the push rod broke this this thing got beat up and made its way down into the oil pan however when i'm looking through here i see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18. There's 18 push rods in this motor. And I'm going to bring you over here so you can see that I'm not joshing you at all. No blowing of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's 18 push rods in this motor. I'm going to bring you over here so you can see that I'm not joshing you at all. No blowing of. One, two, three. Those are all in there. It's hard to see. See, it's the one that's off of the broken one. And these two have them. And all three of these are there. And all three of these, I know it's hard to see but in all three of those and if they were they weren't there they used to be loose and floppy but they're not so this push rod and you can see this push rod you pity one and uh, that could also be what broke it because these rust pits create uh, a stress riser and uh, you wouldn't be uh, you would be surprised I think at how much pressure is actually inflicted on these push rods so this push rod could have just been uh, one that that a guy made error in judgment and just cleaned the rust off it with the wire wheel and stuck it in there uh, anyhow I'm gonna take this push rod out um, maybe pliers because um, well just because so 
looking at this further, um, this is two different push rods because the push rods have two ends on them. One is like this to set down in the cup and one is like this to push up on the, and this is two bottoms. So this is probably from a previous nightmare, um, but this push rod is still good and the broken rocker arm is fine as well. Uh, it, I don't mean fine usable, but uh, it doesn't look like it's damaged anything else in here. So what we'll do now is we'll take these uh, rocker boxes off and uh, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, pretty cool, you know, pretty cool. Um, the way this works is, you know, you know all about uh, four strokes to complete one cycle. And uh, so as the piston draws down and the intake valves are open, it sucks and helps with boosted air to go to fill the cylinders. Those exhaust valves close, the cylinder comes up and pressurizes that fuel air charge and boom, it explodes. It's forced the piston back down. When the piston goes down, it opens the exhaust manifolds, or the, it opens the exhaust valves, and as the piston comes up, it blows the hot charge air out here, gets into the turbo housing, the expansion of those gases causes a <laughs> turbo boost. But anyways, um, there's two cylinders per head, four valves per cylinder. The valves are open and closed via one push rod for two valves and it uses these things right here which are called bridges um, also the injector is fired from that injector stuck down the injectors are fired from the push rods uh, pushing the plunger down the fuel pressurizes the cylinder head and it pressurizes a chamber around the the injector and when the push rod lifts up the rocker the rocker pushes down the plunger the plunger has returned and filled with fuel and when it pushes down it sprays a vapor which is highly explosive and that's the process anyways might have missed something on there uh, but but this is the intake manifold the intake port is in the center of the head and it splits between the two cylinders therefore the intake valves are uh, in the middle of the head the outer valves are the exhaust valves and you can see the exhaust ports are on the outside of the cylinder and so that's how that functions. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much and uh, you get the gist. Right, let's get so, the engine out. Uh, this is part one of let's get the engine apart. I may finish it today. It is pretty nice out. So depending on how that goes, I may get it finished today. pretty it's a pretty interesting design really so you can have individual heads I think it's it's good um, obviously that shit works so you won't hear me saying that Cummins didn't know what they were doing I think individual heads is amazing so if a guy has a cylinder that duffs out he can change one be better if you change too probably but anyways this is just a little jumper and it fuel flows in here and pressurizes this head and goes over the jumper and on down the line uh, pretty cool for sure and uh, yeah so we're going to I gotta I'm gonna wait to take the heads off until I get all of these out um,
These also have a little O-ring. Um, I'm not going to worry about them. Um, I think I have a set. And if I don't, I'm going to get a gasket set anyways and I'll have them. These little screws are special. Uh, but I want to say I have them. Because I have a... Now I don't really want to rebuild this engine. Uh, I may. Obviously not in this block. Uh, oh, look at that, would you? So, there would be the cause of the uh, plugged injector and uh, stuff. A snake of dirt came out of there. Um, Alright, so those are good. I'll get these lines off. We'll take these bridges. I'm going to leave the bridges on. We'll get a line wrench. Yeah. Alright, so we're just going to run these. That was pretty crazy that that exhaust bridge or intake bridge jumped off of there like that. Uh, one of the valves was stuck down a little bit and uh, well now it's not. These bolts are all the same length, uh, so there's no worry about getting them out of position. Uh, you know, I guess if I'm going to make a recommendation, you buy all new head bolts for a Cummins. Um, I mean, I've done it without. Uh, but to be honest with you, not the greatest idea in the world. Now some of these Cummins guys are going to be like, oh, that's not true, James. Cummins head bolts don't break unless you do something wrong. That's not true either. Cummins head bolts break. It's just a thing.
We'll just continue. Yep, she started to rust. Good thing I can take it apart. All right, so what I want to do is I want to get the uh, fan off and uh, get this motor turning over. Let's get these heads off first. You know, cylinders were already taking on rust and I don't know if that was from me or ah, damn All right, so one cylinder was full with diesel fuel. One cylinder, two cylinders were full of water. Uh, this cylinder was in the process of sticking. We can clean that up real quick. This one uh, also. But uh, this one was actually running. Uh, right up until this one you can tell uh, beat, beat on something okay so the cylinder's got rust in it And I'd say those two cylinders had water uh, coming in from a crack in the head, probably. <sighs> All right. So we'll get you, we'll get you looking there. That one was good, but this one, this one was getting rusty, hardcore too. This one was okay. So we're gonna get the, we're gonna turn the engine over. Uh, okay. Again, I just want to keep these cylinders from rusting so I can't get the pistons out. I think I will take the pistons out today, just in case I don't. I'm going to take the air compressor, injection pump, hydraulic pump, oil pump, 
accessory drive all that off of this motor today and uh, then I'm gonna do the bottom take the trans off bell housing off then take the cranking stuff out but in case I don't get to it today which there's always a possibility that I won't get to it today Okay, so that's off. It was fairly easy. Uh, it's weird because that's got a keyway in it. Nope, it just had some headpiece rubber in it. Interesting. Okay, now we will uh, knock out most of these front cover bolts. That's not going to be super good. Will that transmission keep that motor from rolling over, you think? Yep. Once in a while, I wash off the area I'm working on, you know, just cause and stuff. Just like that, and then put the two rocker boxes. And you can stand all three of the rocker boxes up this way. Yeah, with the flat side down. Yep. Look at that. Thanks, Mama. You're doing good. Right beside you. Stop falling over, lady. Oh, well. oh, you got a rag right there. I got more stuff. Anyways, so they only had um, one thing of the dark coffee, so I had to get the little dark coffee and then the extra big regular. We do have some both. And wouldn't you know, there were hot dog and hamburger keto buns. That's crazy. crazy. He's a smart lady. Just like there was coffee. Yeah. You, uh, you want to do, you want to take and get one of the bigger ones out and load it up with those parts. That front cover, that mount, those pulleys, the pulleys can go on the bottom. Look at this 100-year-old 
Well, you don't have to do it, Mama. Go go do your bugs. Well, I want to help you clean up so that way you don't have so much to do. Yeah. But I, that stuff, I'm not working for you. <laughs> that stuff can that stuff can sit out. This I got to get the insides of this apart before uh, it gets rained on, really. But that stuff can sit out, so no big deal. Go and finish up your uh, your bugs. I appreciate what you've done so far for me. You need me to move any of that stuff out of there? Nah. I'm gonna once I get done for the day, I'm gonna pile what I can on that pallet. And uh, <laughs> grody man. And then. Uh, just let the tarp down over it, and then tomorrow resume. I, I want to go do that. Will it start tomorrow? So we have to see if my batteries get here or not. Thing I got up to check because you for sure was disconnected. I don't know why it's doing that. Pretty disappointed in my new phone. See what makes her tick. There's pins in here, so a guy needs to be gentle. Those look good. Camshaft looks pretty good. It uh, it is slightly forward. Uh, I'm not sure why, but maybe that's just where it was happy. Now, there's some sort of magic that's involved in uh, camshafts. This cam is able to walk forward and backwards. So, I imagine it floats in there. 
so it's, it's fine. Uh, we're going to get this pump off. We need to take a bolt out there, a bolt up there. Maybe a bolt right there, probably. Uh, so. This one down here does. Pretty crazy. She would put this little line, bend an S line, and put it on the back of this pump. Uh, I need to know what you were thinking. Because, you know, a guy could have put it in this plug and had just a rubber hose that went, you know, that's, I mean, it's just me. Just put this little line in here that you couldn't possibly service. If this line were to break, You'd have to take this whole side of the motor apart to get at this thing. And that's just done. So, if you're the guy who designed it, you give me a call and that's up. There's a question, your reasoning there. I'd like to know what, what your mindset was. You know, like, what's a guy thinking when he does something like that? I, don't, I just don't get it. Okay, so let's take one more of these 916s. 
pull top with this other camp file we're having, then we'll take the camshaft out. Um, I don't remember where I'm putting this. There? And then these. These are these. These are those. And bing bang boom. Mano. Where are these? Those, these, and then. Okay. if we can just take a camshaft out. I mean, I think we can. Don't you guys? So much easier than a cat, like like literally a thousand times easier than a caterpillar. Of course, it ain't out yet, so I shouldn't talk too much shit. It is pretty close. These injector lobes uh, have seen better days. I think, I think it's still a good cam, but it'll have to be measured. And uh, you know, because there's a lot more, there's a lot more fuel uh, than there is a uh, valve lift. You know what I mean? and it's a long duration of lift uh, I don't know if duration is the right word um, but the lobes are, are very different this, this cam looks good I mean there's some 
there's some sign of wear, but uh, I would be afraid to stick it to something on it. Grease it up nice so it doesn't rust. Grease it up and then wrap it up in plastic. I have an old rusty one in there. Pretty nice actually. Uh, I think we're gonna start stacking up this pallet. I'm getting hungry and hot. Uh, I think I'm gonna start stacking up this pallet, get some pieces uh, wrapped up in plastic and rolled up, and uh, spray down some other pieces and just get this pallet organized and covered up. Uh, yeah, we gotta get the we get one more block under it, we'll get that bell housing off and we'll rip that trans off there. And uh, we'll get that bell housing off. And then we'll stand this thing up and take the bottom end out. Cross the pistons, we'll put those, uh, we'll clean those up and uh, maybe we'll even, we're not gonna take the sleeves out because this engine isn't any good anyways, this block's no good, so I'm not gonna bother pulling the sleeves but I will take the crank rods and pistons out and uh, we'll get those boiled up and in a in a tote get this end this transmission hooked up and set out of the way get this thing flicked up get this uh, get this pallet built up so it can handle some weight and we'll treat those heads with some rust inhibitor and uh, get those stacked on there Get the intake manifold and the compressor and pump and oil pump and all the accessories up on there. And uh, we'll clear out a spot in the middle for the crankshaft. We'll get the crankshaft out. Uh, and we'll get it cleaned up and uh, creased up, wrapped up in plastic. And, uh, and then we'll get this block off to the dump. We only have a little bit left to go. We've got to get this oil cooler off, a couple of fittings take every fitting out of the block and uh, it's good to have those things save all those fittings those pipe plugs and stuff and uh, yeah I don't know what time it is I feel like it's uh, late in the day but I'm gonna go check with Jessica and I'll be back